Diesel engine won't start? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to properly troubleshoot it without a computer or the need for any specialty tooling. Probably one of the comments I get the most of is my engine won't start. It cranks and cranks, but it just won't start. And there could be a lot of causes for this, so I figured I would make a video and try to explain my troubleshooting procedure on how to fix it. Now, normally at my job, we have full CAT access to specialty tooling, diagnostic equipment, but what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna try and make it so that you, the owner of the vehicle, without buying hardly any specialty equipment, can try to troubleshoot it yourself. Now, you'll still need certain tooling, you know, basic tooling such as wrenches. Um, you will need a pressure gauge, you know, assuming you have a fuel pressure issue. Um, but all these things can be bought um, fairly cheaply. So let's get on to the video. But before we do, I wanted to say thank you to John for sending $20 to AdeptApe at Yahoo dot com on paypal is the donation site and onto the video thank you so the first thing you're going to want to do is find out if your engine has any check engine lights now if you have a cruise control switch and your engine is off you can hold the accelerate cruise control switch up and you'll get a blink code if you do have a check engine light and what you're going to do is your check engine lights going to blink and it's going to blink in a set of two. So you'll count the numbers in the first set that it blinks, and then when it does the second set, it will blink a certain amount of numbers. And that will give you a code. The code could be two six or six eight. And if it gives you multiple different ones, that means you have multiple check engine lights and they're in sets of two. You'll wanna write those numbers down and then you'll wanna go online and find out what those check engine lights mean for the specific engine that you own. Now, if you're familiar with my YouTube channel, most of the clips I'm gonna be showing you in this video are from other videos I've done that are longer videos on the subjects I'm gonna be addressing. So most of this material will not be new to this channel, but as a whole, as a troubleshooting guide, it will be new material. So if you have an issue in one of these sections, let's say it's fuel pressure, well then go to my fuel pressure video and watch that full video. It'll help explain the system better and help you troubleshoot it more in depth. But this video is more focused on at least identifying what the possible cause is and then you'll need to do further troubleshooting. Um, also, I'm gonna be discussing what are the main causes for the different CAT engines. In this video so let's say you have a 3126 and it's not starting well the biggest two causes for that are typically the Huey system or the cat ECM circuit or the ECM itself has been bad let's say you have a C15 well two biggest causes for that not to start are the cat ECM or the electrical system for the ECM or the fuel system um, most of the non-starting issues that we run into are fuel or ECM related. So I'm gonna be kind of talking about those the majority of the time, but I'll also discuss the Huey systems. All right, on to the next section. All right, so typically when we get a crank no start in the shop, first thing we do is we test for fuel pressure. Now on all cat engines on the fuel filter base, there's gonna be a fitting, and it's called a CompuCheck fitting. But what you do is you, you'll plug a hose into that and you'll need a pressure gauge to read it. And what you'll do is you'll crank your engine and you wanna see some fuel pressure there. Now this is a C15, so it should build fuel, fuel pressure rather quickly. So this is good fuel pressure, 65 PSI. If you have a C7 or a 3126 and it's only building maybe 25, 30 pounds of pressure, that's acceptable as well. But on the bigger engines, they'll usually build more. Okay, so did your engine have good fuel pressure? Was the fuel pressure needle all over the place? That's a very important reason why your engine might not be starting. If you have no fuel pressure or it's very low, let's say it's five PSI, well, that's not enough pressure that's being supplied to your injectors and that's gonna cause a no start. 
Now you might be saying, hey, do I really need to go out and buy a fuel pressure gauge? Since most people don't have one, um, you know, any pressure gauge will work, but you will need one that goes up to 100 PSI at least, and you also need the hoses that can connect to the fittings on the fuel filter base. And you don't actually need a fuel pressure gauge. Um, let's say you're on the side of the road, you know, or for whatever reason it won't start. Um, but if you do have access to wrenches, what you can do is you can crack the fuel return line. So in that video there before, if you're looking at the fuel filter base, there's the hose. On the right side, if you're facing it, the right side that goes straight back, that's your return line. If you crack that return line and then crank your engine, if you get fuel spray out of there, you know you probably have good fuel pressure because that's after the fuel pressure regulator. So if you're getting fuel pressure out of there, that means that at least you're getting fuel through the engine and it's building enough pressure to get through the fuel pressure regulator. Now, if you own a C7 or a 3126, that's going to be almost impossible to do because that fuel pressure regulator is on the back of the cylinder head. So unless you're in, say, an RV where you have easy access to the back of the cylinder head, it'd be really hard to crack that line and see if you're getting any fuel out of there. But that's also a way, pretty much without any specialty tooling, you can test if you have fuel pressure. And fuel pressure is pretty straightforward. If you're getting low fuel pressure, watch my fuel pressure video. It goes into a lot more detail on this. So what's the second cause we're going to look at? Well, it's ECM. CAT ECMs do fail quite often, but also the circuits to them can fail. And we'll be showing you what pins to check for, uh, a trick to see if your injectors are firing. But before you do that, you might want to check your gauges. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say your coolant temp sensor, let's say your engine's been off all night, you go to start it in the morning, and your coolant temp sensor, when you turn the key on, is reading 160 degrees for some reason. Well, the engine's going to see that as well. And your fuel mapping is based on the temperature of the engine. So if it's cranking but won't quite start, you might have a sensor issue. Now, hopefully you'll get a check engine light from that, but if it's just reading high, the ECM doesn't know that it's just reading high. So look for little clues like that. Um, you know, if you had a high coolant temp sensor reading, let's say it, the ECM thinks the engine's 200 degrees, it's going to change your fuel mapping, which might cause your engine not to start. Also, are you picking up a tachometer signal? If you're cranking your engine and there's no tax signal, meaning you're cranking your engine, your engine's turning at 200, maybe 300 RPM while cranking, but your tax hasn't moved. Well, that can be an indication that you have a bad ECM or a bad timing sensors. However, CAT uses dual timing sensors, so the odds that both went out are very low. So if you don't have a tax signal, you might want to really look at that ECM. And I'm going to be talking about what pins to look for and kind of an easy way to check to see if that ECM is trying to fire those injectors. Okay, so if your engine's cranking but not starting, and you've either checked fuel pressure or you want to start with by troubleshooting the ECM, a good tool to have is an inductive voltmeter. Now, you can get these at any hardware store or online. Um, they're fairly cheap. You can pick them up for, you know, anywhere from 10 to $30, depending on the brand. And they work fairly simply. You turn them on, and when you get next to a voltage source, they blink, usually red, and they'll beep. And what that tells you is that it picks up voltage. Now, the ECM on pretty much all newer diesel engines fires the injectors with a voltage signal. And usually that voltage signal is higher than 12 volts. On a CAT, it can be up to 120 volts. So what you're going to do is you're going to place it in your harness. It doesn't have to be in a wire, just next to some wires and then crank the engine. Is it turning red? If it is, that means that the ECM is sending a voltage signal to fire the injectors. Now, what we have here is one injector. We're going to actually see that it's firing an injector, or at least trying to. And if it doesn't light up or turn red, that means that the ECM is not trying to fire the injectors. And you may have a problem with the ECM or the wiring 
to the ECM not supplying voltage. So we're cranking and you'll see that it is lighting up. And of course it's trying to fire one injector so it's not gonna blink every microsecond, it's gonna blink on and off. So we have determined that the ECM is trying to fire the injectors. So what we have here is a CAT ECM. It has two connectors and the rear one, which would be this one, is called your P1 connector. This is where all the voltages come in from the OEM to the ECM. Now there are some pins that are very important you might want to test. So if you look closely at this connector, there's going to be small numbers on them. And if you look at pin 70, that's your switched power source. So pin 70 should have 12 volts with the key on and while cranking. Now there are other pins that are quite important as well. Pins 52 and 53 on most CAD ECMs are constant powers. You should have voltage there all the time. Now if you look at this download, you see it has current faults on all the injectors. If you got your check engine light uh, blink signal and that had all the cylinder codes, you probably want a new ECM. Um, getting back to the pin locations, pin 63, 65, and 67 should have battery grounds as well. Now one of those might be missing, but check those for voltages and grounds. Okay, so if you did the inductive voltmeter test and you're getting it to light up, that probably means your ECM is trying to fire injectors. And that probably means your ECM is okay. But you don't have a computer to communicate with it, so it's going to be hard to say that it's definitively okay. But if you are getting the voltages, you at least know that they're trying to fire the injectors. Now in the other video, the last video section I showed you, the engine download, which you guys won't be able to view if you don't have a computer, had a bunch of check engine lights for injector current faults. Now if you did the blink code test and were able to get blink codes and you had more than one injector coding for let's say a current fault or current low or current high, that's usually an indication that the ECM itself is bad and not the wiring. Now you can get a wiring diagram and try to trace out the wiring, but usually, let's say you have all six injectors, that's pretty much a guarantee that that ECM is bad. Um, now that's covered fuel, and we've covered the ECM itself. And those are really the two biggest common failure points for an engine not starting. Now, what are the other ones? Well, if you have a Huey system, meaning a 3126, CAT C7 or CAT C9. Another real big cause of the engine not starting is the Huey system. So I'm going to go over just a few things. And if it does turn out you have a Huey problem, well, then you're probably going to want to watch my Huey videos because that system is somewhat intricate. But you can kind of troubleshoot it without needing too crazy of specialty tooling. So what we're looking at here is a Huey pump. This is the Huey pump. It drives off the front structure and it supplies really high pressure oil to the cylinder head, which then fires your injectors. And like I said, if you have a 3126, a C9, or a C7, this is what's running your engine. So let's talk about that system a little bit. So it supplies high pressure oil to the injectors. Well, what can go wrong with that? Well, the pump itself can fail, which if it fails, you will have no injectors firing or they might be firing weakly and that can cause a Huey problem which will cause your engine not to start or to be rough to start. Now what else can cause problems? Well the injector seals themselves or the injectors can also cause problems. This is a 3126 injector. If you see, the green arrow and the red arrow are pointing to the O-rings that seal the Huey rail inside the head. Well, what can happen is typically the upper, meaning the green arrowed one, O-ring can fail. And when you cr try to crank your engine, the Huey oil will pour out around that seal and you will not build any Huey pressure. Now you will not notice that, however, because this is under the valve cover. And since it's under the valve cover, you won't see the oil leak. If you pull the valve cover and crank it, and you see one of these injectors is spraying oil 
a lot more than the other ones because they all leak a little bit of oil. Well, then you know that that injector or the injector seal has failed and is causing a Huey issue. Now, let's say you don't see any leaks. Well, if you see that sensor that is circled in red, that is a Huey pressure sensor. You can remove that and then put a pressure gauge in that rail. It doesn't have to be where the sensor was. It can be in the rail next to where the sensor is. And when you crank the engine, you can test the pressure. Now be careful, that pressure can get up to several thousand PSI, so make sure you're using a high pressure gauge. Okay, so that pretty much covered the basics of the Huey system. If you suspect a Huey fault, or you got a Huey code when you did the blink codes, watch my Huey videos, I have a couple on them, because the systems are somewhat complicated uh, to someone that's not used to touching them. Now, you'll need oil pressure as well. Uh, you know, is your oil pressure gauge showing oil pressure while cranking? If you don't have oil pressure, well, you have a lot of issues, but your injectors on a Huey system are not going to fire because you need oil pressure to supply to the Huey pump, which can then bump it up and send pressure to the injectors. So that covers pretty much all the basics and pretty much about probably 98% of what causes crank nose starts on cat diesel engines. But it doesn't cover all the problems. I mean, it is theoretical. Let's say something failed in the intake circuit. You know, you maybe collapsed an air filter or something got into the intake tubing. Let's say your engine's been sitting a while. Um, you know, that could potentially cause an issue with the system not starting. Um, what are other potential causes? Well, you might want to check your timing sensors. You know, if they have debris on them or they've become an open circuit, that can cause problems. But CAT on pretty much all their electronic engines use two timing sensors and the engine will try to start on either one. And usually they have a cam and a crank sensor. Um, but if you suspect that both of them are bad, you can pull them out. Um, but if you're getting a tack signal, remember I said earlier in the video, if you're getting a tack signal, well, your speed sensors are probably working because pretty much what happens is your tack signal comes from the ECM and the ECM gets its engine speed signal from the timing sensors. Now, there are other things that could have caused, you know, your injectors could have failed or you might have had weak injectors and they've just finally given up the ghost, but it's hard to say. Um, that's more component change out. Um, this is... This video is really made for someone that owns this engine that doesn't have tons of tooling and is trying to figure out why their engine isn't starting. You know, if it's getting more intricate, you might want to go through my more in-depth videos. And if you have a hunch on what it might be, watch those videos. And, you know, if you suspect maybe it's cam timing or something like that, um, you know, then you probably want to take it to a dealership because then you're getting pretty technical. Um, another trick is, does it try to start on ether? If it either does start or it will run on ether until the ether runs out, meaning you're not just holding the can in there, but it'll fire up for a couple seconds, then the engine dies down. Well, then you know your mechanical parts of the engine are working, such as your valves and your piston, all that stuff. Um, so it's probably, you know, fuel or electrical related, which is typically the causes of a no start. Um, that's really all the basics for covering why your engine won't start. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section and check out my other videos. All right, thank you.